Okay, I'd like to introduce Cynthia Wilson, who's the Vice President for Learning and Chief Impact Officer for the Lake for Innovation in the Community College. Cynthia? Thank you, and hi everyone, and welcome to Transforming the College Digital Learning Environment. Uh, for those of you who may not know about the League, I just want to say that um, we are an international nonprofit organization committed to cultivating innovation in community and technical colleges. And there'll be a link at the end where you can learn a little bit more about us. <clears throat> uh, my colleagues and I at the League are pleased to continue our collaboration with IMS Global Learning Consortium in presenting this two-part webinar series. In the past, the League and IMS Global have partnered on surveys of community college presidents and IT leaders, and we're very excited about the response for this webinar. We look forward also to future collaborations that can serve our members. <clears throat> Today's webinar is part one of the series, and it showcases the teaching and learning benefits of pervasive ed tech interoperability standards and covers new community initiatives for accelerating next generation digital learning environments. Our panelists, will provide examples of ways they have been able to evolve their digital ecosystem for the best teaching and learning experiences. The second webinar to be held in February will focus on digital credentials and we'll have more information about that a little bit later too. Right now though, I wanna introduce and welcome the panelists for today's webinar. Paul Zarapata, the Vice President and Chief Information Officer for the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Gary Ritter, Executive Director of Client Services at Central Piedmont Community College, and Kelly Hoyland, Higher Education Program Manager at IMS Global Learning Consortium. And now I'll just turn the program right over to Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, for that introduction. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, I'm going to share a little bit of a background about what IMS Global Learning Consortium does and how we um, help support our higher ed institutions, including community colleges and technical colleges. From there, I'll highlight some of the standards that we are going to share that really impact the digital learning environment, and then I'll turn it over to our other two panelists to show how those have actually been put in place on their campuses. So IMS is global. IMS Global's mission is really to focus on improving the digital learning environment using scalable technology. So we work with our members to identify ways where we can streamline identify standards so that the interactions between the different learning tools are improved and um, done in a way that's easy to scale. This is done through our interoperability standards. Um, we have a membership base that includes K-12, higher education, and our ed tech suppliers. Our main, our main initiative areas include a wide variety that change as our learning environment changes. These are really determined through our members' needs and what we can do to help support them. Today, we're gonna to focus really on our learning data and analytics section, as well as our learning platforms, apps, and tools. As mentioned, we will have a follow-up webinar in February that will focus more on our digital micro-credentials. So what our standards allow you to do is they allow you to use a very connected ecosystem for your teaching and learning. We know that there is no one magical ed tech tool that will meet all of your needs in the digital learning environment. So what we've done is we've developed standards to allow your various tools to interact and create that rich and robust ecosystem that is necessary to meet your needs and your student needs. So what our tools do allow, what they do is they reduce the need for custom integrations and things like that. Um, so areas that included are like program management. So if you're trying to manage your programs, identify and track your standards, and assessments in those areas, as well as learning analytics. We'll cover more on instruction as well as credentialing later. So the first area I wanna highlight is our Learning Tools Interoperability Standard, or LTI. If you've been involved in a digital learning environment, especially with an LMS and connecting external tools to that, you may have heard about LTI previously. This has been around for almost 10 years now. It is kind of the preferred ed tech standard for how you can connect your LMS platform with those third party applications. LTI provides the foundation so that you can securely connect those as well as have an improved learning experience. So this allows credentials to be passed so students don't have to re-log into a new tool if you're going to link to that extra, extra tool. tool. Um, using LTI, I was on a campus before coming to IMS, we had one integration that was not leveraging LTI, and we were working on developing custom APIs for over six months just to integrate one tool. 
when we switched to a different tool that was LTI certified, we were able to integrate that tool within a matter of days. So that's what the power of LTI can do for you. Another member um, actually recently shared they had switched LMS platforms recently and through their LTIs, they were able to quickly get on board of over 50 integrations within the first semester of that LMS platform launch. So they were really excited about how quick and easy it was to go. The nice thing about LTI is all of the major LMS platforms are certified and many of your learning applications are as well. And that number continues to grow. With LTI, because it's been around for a number of years, we actually recently re released a new version called LTI Advantage. What LTI Advantage does is it has taken a look at the foundation of LTI and upgraded to some of the newest security standards out there so that there's even more secure connection between your LMS and your tool providers. In addition to that secure connection, we're also improving some of the functionality of that integration. So things like deep linking has been improved. So previously, if you were linking um, textbook publisher content to your LMS, sometimes you still had to copy and paste various links back and forth. And with this deep linking extension now, it allows you to have a much more intuitive way so you can actually navigate directly through that content in the LMS without having to copy and paste. So it's a much easier experience for instructional designers or faculty to add content to their courses. For the student perspective, it's still a very easy to use interface and that information still appears to be in the same frame and platform so they aren't noticing that change between platforms as much. In addition to deep linking, they've made some improvements on how the groups can go behind, you know, it was always easy to get class rosters over to some of those other tools, but now this allows you to actually have your faculty defined groups as well talk to those third party tools. So if you've created small groups in your LMS, those groups can actually transfer over into those third party applications. As well as the assignment and grade book services has had some improvements in that. The nice thing about this work is it really was a collaborative effort. So we were looking at major LMS platforms working together with our institutional members to identify how do we solve these problems in a way that's going to work for everyone? So it was really, it was really a great process to see all of the variety of essentially competitors working together to solve this problem for our institutions. So there's a lot of information about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The LTI Advantage Toolkit was developed and this is a free resource to anyone um, that would like it. So members and non-members are available to access this toolkit and what it really does, it, it really helps you to be able to have those conversations with your institution as well as with your vendors or suppliers about why LTI Advantage is important to you and how to adopt it and how to get to that point. So there's some sample procurement language, there's a letter from all of some of our major institutional leaders endorsing it so you can say, I'm not the only institution that's going to be looking for this so that you can kind of raise the awareness of LTI Advantage. Moving, from, moving on from LTI, I'm going to cover a little bit about our learning data and analytics. The standard we really work on here is called Caliper, and Caliper is designed to help um, collect that clickstream data that's available through our various learning tools and bring it into one dashboard. So as, we, as we've talked about, the digital learning environment is robust and ver there's a variety of tools involved. So to get a clear picture of what students are doing in that learning environment, you need a way to bring all of that data back together into one place. So Caliper is kind of the foundation to allow you to do that. So this is not a tool that you buy. This just allows those tools to be able to talk to each other and that, that data to flow back into one area. This has been really beneficial for some of our members. They've used it for retention purposes so they can get a better idea of what, where students are, what's happening in that learning environment. You know, it's they might not spend a lot of time in the LMS because they're spending more time in a third party application. So it's very rich data for you to be able to better understand what's happening with your students. As well as instructional designers are using some of this data for helping redefine course design and make it even more interactive and effective for students. In addition to that caliper area, we're working on adaptive learning as well. So knowing that there's a lot of data structure behind that adaptive framework, um, learning how to leverage some of the existing standards like LTI and Caliber to really support the adaptive learning that's happening on some of our campuses. So identifying how we can track that content and bring those multiple adaptive learning platforms into a similar dashboard through Caliper is one of our newest initiative areas that we're working on. 
knowing that we're using so many tools, um, there's always been an increased uh, awareness of student privacy. And so we have worked with our members, both K-12, higher ed, and suppliers to develop a rubric that we can use to really review the policies that all of those tools are using and identify areas that may not be the, the best policy for you. So you can kind of get an idea of how are those policies working? Is a, a tool that has everything really understood and really well defined? Is it a policy that, or a tool that you may wanna have a conversation before you adopt? So because of that, that this rubric was, co was created. And as a result, we've reviewed 2,700 products and over 1,500 security policies have been vetted using this vetting program. And what that vetting profile does is we have an IMS staff member who's done the vetting. His review is actually posted in our product directory for all of our members to review. Now, this may not ask 100% of the questions you need to as you go through your procurement process at your institution, but what it really does is it gives you a good foundation to start from. So it identifies areas that you do need to get more detail on or figure out how you're going to address that on your campus. So as I mentioned, we do have a product directory. Um, this product directory is free and open to the public. It is the official listing of which products have been certified. It is not uncommon. Sometimes there's tool providers that will say, we're LTI compliant or we're LTI, we conform to the LTI standard. That does not mean they're actually certified to the standard. Our certification process is at a point where they have to go through a process where they have to verify that they are certified and meeting the standard and they have to do this every 12 months. So it's a really good indicator to make sure that they are meeting all of the specification standards. If a product is not listed in the directory, it means they have not passed their IMS testing or that certification has expired. We've heard sometimes that there's companies who say they're conforming and then they actually go through the certification process and there's little quirks or little nuances that need to be addressed as they go through that certification process to really make it a tool that will work across platforms and across tools. So this is what our product directory looks like. There's a lot of um, products in it. There's thousands. Um, you can search by a standard area. You can search by an organization. And then once you find the tool that you're looking for, you can actually see which certifications are um, posted and when they're valid through, as well as that app vetting profile is there for our members. So you can see as a non-member that it has been vetted, but you maybe can't see the details behind the profile if you aren't a member of IMS. And there's various levels of membership that would get you access to this if you're interested. And at this point, I'll pause if there are questions before passing the microphone to Paul from Kentucky. Looks like there's one question about getting access to the website. So I will post an alternative link to get there. If that one's not working, we'll follow up on that before the end of the webinar. Any other questions? All right, at this point, then I'm going to pass it off to Paul from Kentucky. All right, thank you. Um, Greetings to everyone. My name is Paul Zarapata. I'm the Vice President and CIO at Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Um, <clears throat> like many of you, we've got a relatively small uh, department in our system office for IT, about 35 people. We do have a separate online learning office that has three people in it. <clears throat> Very small development teams. Um, I'm uh, on the IMS Board of Directors for full disclosure. Um, I'm also, KCTCS is also a member of the league. Um, our system office is located just a few miles away from Woodford, Woodford Reserve in Versailles, if you like bourbon, so you come visit us. And I apologize for my voice, I've got a house full of sick people, so I'm fighting through a cold here. By the numbers, we've got 16 individually accredited colleges across the state, over 70 locations. Um, Specifically talking about our technology, we've got one instance of the student information system, which is PeopleSoft, and then we've got one instance of Blackboard Learn, SAS, which is hosted by Blackboard in Amazon Web Services. Now we're going to talk a little bit about transforming the digital learning environment. Now not always, but I see it frequently, community and technical colleges typically have much smaller technology staffs than universities. To be honest, I think the only smaller average IT staff 
is in K through 12, where they've actually embraced standards quite a bit higher than we have in higher education. They have found the value in standards because it makes things a heck of a lot easier. As you know, the technology landscape at your institution makes use of countless digital tools, applications, and resources to support and improve teaching and learning. But when these products don't work together, your environment becomes very complex and messy. It makes it extremely difficult to scale your technology initiatives and sustain a cohesive digital strategy. Standards can really help this because they ease your path towards the transformation of your college's digital learning environment. In addition to the issues that I've listed here, we've also got extreme pressure in the areas of college completion, student success, and degrees and certifications that are relevant and timely. Time to degree or certificate is also scrutinized heavily by both industry and politicians. The digital learning environment when done correctly can really assist in these areas as well. Digital learning environments are a team sport. I think Kelly mentioned that, and it's one that you really need to win. On the next slide, right here, this is a uh, representation of the 2019 higher education technology landscape. This is put together by a company called Edge Ventures Research. And if you go to their website, you can download this in a, a super uh, uh, large thing that you can actually print out. It's very interesting. Um, it includes areas of advancement, college-wise, and enterprise, IT backbone, student success, and instruction. For institutions like ours, community and technical colleges, I believe it's important to partner with companies versus having a strictly contractual nature. When there's skin in the game for both of you, there's much better collaboration and give and take. Um, the reason why I say this is because when you've got partnerships, they are much more willing to come to the table with these standard integrations. You know, if you're constantly waving your contract at them, yelling about service level agreements, your relationship is probably already dead. As your digital learning environment grows to meet the needs of all, your education technology staff are challenged to create a seamless user experience without sacrifice, sacrificing innovation or choice. Next slide, please, there we go. So why should we care about IMS global standards? IMS is completely aligned with the strategic mission in higher education has identified four key elements needed to evolve your digital ecosystem. It starts with procurement. You put verbiage in your procurement that mandates some standards to make things easier for you from the get-go. Uh, integration, improvement of teaching and learning, and digitally recording achievements with credentials that reflect competencies. I will show you how standards can save you both human and financial resources, how they can give your institution agility and the power of choice in your digital learning ecosystem, how they can reduce risks, and how the IMS community is a real, really vast uh, resource for knowledge and how to really interact with people that have been there and done that, not only with other universities and colleges, but uh, with the vendors themselves. So for strategic and relevant, the learning tools and content, you're, you're looking for seamless integration without the overhead of customization. Um, I believe Kelly mentioned uh, something about the length of time for one-off customizations. I've seen that uh, time and time again. And if you're constantly having to put together a brittle interface, it's gonna cause you so much problems. Uh, innovation at scale, having greater choice and flexibility to choose the right tool at the right time and not be hamstrung by either a, a legacy LMS or your legacy student system or many others. And then harnessing the learning data to inform institutional decisions, student recruitment and retention strategies. So with resource savings, there we go. You know, what used to, for, for our experience here at KCTCS, for what used to take us 12 to 16 weeks, uh, we've seen this in several different um, LTI uh, integrations. To integrate a brittle interface now literally takes us a few hours with a loosely coupled and robust solution. Um, this is one of the reasons why we put IMS global standard requirements in our procurement process. Um, and in talking with the uh, chief strategy offer, officer, Jeremy Auger, over at Desire to Learn, the feedback that he gets from using LTI and LTI Advantage integrations is that it's 10 to 100 times improvement in the cost and time to integrate 
by using these standards. You know, common sets of data exchange free up the resources and they can be put towards something more useful. So now going to institutional agility and power of choice, when you have small staff numbers, a seemingly endless number of initiatives, and everything is a priority, which means nothing is a priority, standards really come in handy. By leveraging a certified standard for integration, you can greatly reduce implementation time because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Many standards empower faculty to leverage plug and play cap compatibility and bring integrations together in hours versus days and months. Community colleges are embattled in recruiting wars across the country from other institutions with ridiculously large marketing budgets and deep pockets. For example, Southern New Hampshire University's budget last year for marketing was north of $133 million. I'm sure your institution doesn't come close to that level, nor does ours. The reason I mention this is because these competitions set expectations that instructional and other technology students see and hear about in universities universities and are expected in the community colleges. It's a little bit cheesy, but as you can see in that picture there, I've got a red circle around the slingshot, and that's how strongly I feel standards can help us even the playing field. Risk reduction. Adoption of standards can play a very important role in, mis in risk reduction. In addition to these three, the biggest one in my mind is security. As was covered earlier in this presentation, IMS thoroughly vets the security of these integrations. The latest security models adopted by IMS based on industry best practices for user privacy and security, and this new model provides improved consistency between IMS specifications and better support for mobile implementation. I think we've talked about the benefits of IMS Global Membership. Um, I'm not gonna read the slides to you, but one thing I would highly encourage you to do is go to imsglobal.org and look up the Higher Education Playbook. And what that has is a ton of resources on how to really take a, and dip a toe into this if you're not doing it already. Um, it's got videos, it's got links to resources. You can get as down into the weeds as you want to and I think it's an excellent resource. So LTI is awesome, but LTI Advantage is awesomer, if that's a word. Um, it's the foundation for enabling innovative, flexible, and extensible digi digital learning ecosystem with top of the line security. You can have more trust in the ability to protect sensitive data and personally identifiable information within the digital ecosystem. So the three things that LTI Advantage brings you, at least more important for us, the names and role provisioning services. Uh, many of you had, have had to write your own custom processes to provision uh, classroom teacher and student data uh, into your learning management system. This automates all of that. Deep linking was talked about a little bit, Basically, this allows you to, to add playlists, tables of content, uh, enable links in, in other HTML content, and add pre-registered tools. One of the things I'm most looking forward to <clears throat> is uh, in Blackboard Learn, being able to connect to some of our Pearson MyLabs products deep within. And so instead of taking you to the front page of that MyLab, actually take you to the learning resource that the student needs. And then with assignment and grading services, you get gradable assignments shared with a tool, you get numeric scores returned back to the LMS, assessors comments are returned if they're provided, and multiple, resor multiple results supported in a single exchange. And the instructor override and history of attempts is allowed. So LTI Advantage also allowed us to integrate our accessibility tool directly with the LMS. This is a product called Ally. Um, we had received a few letters from the feds uh, telling us that we weren't in compliance with not only our websites, but with some of our LMS courses. Um, we were able to use this tool to clean those up. So what's next for KCTCS? I think it was mentioned earlier in February, there's a a uh, digital credential summit. 
Um, we're looking very forward to that. Uh, the comprehensive learner record pilot, this is taking um, educational experiences and, and kind of centralizing those. We're looking at more LTI Advantage integrations with our courseware vendors and a wider rollout of competency-based badges. And with that, I'd be glad to field any questions. Okay, just a reminder, you can use the chat or the Q&A panel to submit your questions. Uh, the questions that have come in so far have been about getting the recording. And yes, we'll make sure that everyone who has uh, attended today's session will get, uh, probably within 24 hours, we'll get an email with a link to the recording and the slides from today's session. Okay, we can continue. Hello everyone, uh, this is Gary Ritter. Uh, thanks for joining us and thanks to um, both IMS Global and the League for uh, inviting me to participate in this panel. Um, I don't have a whole lot of new things to add to what Paul mentioned. I think he did a great job of, of listing all the comprehensive things, but uh, maybe what I can do is kind of give some specific use cases of how we're applying this. Uh, so Central Piedmont is a community college. Um, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina. We serve uh, over 70,000 students each year uh, across curriculum, credit bearing courses, corporate and continuing education, and college and career readiness. Uh, we're spread out over six campuses uh, in Mecklenburg County. What you see here is um, our quad during, uh, this is during the solar eclipse uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so we had a lot of people out there. Um, <clears throat> And um, yeah, this is looking towards uh, Uptown Charlotte. So we sit basically right outside of the, um, of the loop, uh, the, the interstate that, that surrounds uh, downtown Charlotte. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we are a centralized IT shop. Um, we are not currently an IMS Global member, um, but we do pay attention and keep up with everything. And um, we are again considering uh, joining. Um, so we're, we're kind of looking into that right now. Uh, so there are several ways that we take advantage of IMS Global, and um, I think the, the biggest way that's currently happening are the LTI integration. So we, we have 35 um, LTI total, and those are different versions. Some of them are active, some are not. Um, some have a lot of usage, some have a little bit less. Uh, but these are some that I thought I'd mention. Uh, Lumen Learning is one that is um, kind of a, uh, an open source or, or open um, courseware. Uh, we're using that in some of our biology classes. Smart Thinking is a Pearson product. Um, we use that with our, um, at our tutoring center. Uh, the NC Lore is, um, is a product that is um, organized by our uh, central office. We, we're part of the North Carolina Community College system. And the NC Lore is a, is a learning object repository um, that anyone can um, both contribute to and make use of if you're in, in this system. And Smart Sparrow is uh, an adaptive learning platform that we use, uh, again, in some of our science classes. And we are also on Blackboard Ally as well. Um, and that's really a great product, I think. Um, okay, moving on. Um, we actually now, um, have, we've had a hosted solutions requirement document um, going back to about 2013. Um, I think this is one of the areas, at least when we talked to other people back then, where Central Piedmont was a little forward thinking in terms of really kind of like making sure that any products that our students are using or are um, housing student data, that they meet um, lots of different requirements. So this document covers everything from cyber insurance to authentication protocols to security to accessibility standards. and um, at some point, you know, the document does change over time. We did add this sentence that, um, you know, really lays it out that if you want to integrate with our LMS, um, you know, we're really needing you to be an LTI-based authentication and authorization. Um, I should point out now, because this will maybe be um, relevant to some of what I say, that we are still a black board um, on-prem shop. We are um, right now on 2018 Q4. Um, we are in the midst of uh, an RFP so that we can move to a, a cloud hosted LMS. Um, and I think this is another area where you can see that RFPs um, are, are an, another place where we can, um, you know, specify as part of our requirements um, 
uh, IMS global standard. So right now we have um, three RFPs, either active or pending, uh, that in some way, shape, or form uh, specify, um, specify these standards. So uh, for instance, the one I mentioned about the LMS, um, that has LTI in there. Um, we also put Caliper in there. Um, with Caliper, um, we, we're not currently using it, but we want to be prepared, right? So, you know, sometimes, and I'm so sure a lot of you do this too, when you're looking at products, you kind of have a baseline of features that you're ready to use right now, but, you know, also looking at ways that you can maybe um, take advantage of other uses, other features down the road, even if it's not something, you know, right away. Uh, so this was uh, important for us to include. Um, we also found that, um, you know, for some times you're getting lots and lots of, uh, responses, you know, whether or not they adhere to some of these standards can be a good way to filter out um, the responses. Now, you know, it doesn't mean it's a, a deal breaker necessarily, but it's, it's, you know, part of the calculation and it's good for us to know. Um, and oftentimes we found that, you know, in the area of the RFP where we talk about kind of the relationship or the use of IMS global standards, you know, whether or not they're certified, these things, uh, that's also an opportunity for vendors to kind of say, you know, we're a board member or in this working group. And, um, you know, that goes, I think, to, to helping us get a better understanding of, you know, where that company is in terms of understanding and being part of the, the higher education um, digital, digital uh, space, if you will. Uh, so, so that's good for us. Um, uh, but also the future. And um, I show here, actually, this is the future, what will probably be one of our um, our landmark buildings. This is going to be our new library student union, which we actually don't have a student union right now. Uh, so that's under construction. Um, but um, as, um, as Paul mentioned, LTI Advantage is one that we are pretty excited about. Um, we are um, in the very early stages of this because um, we're, we're moving to Blackboard 2019 Q2 in uh, about a month. Uh, but we already have uh, one product that we're considering uh, testing out, which is the uh, the Norton Inquisitive product. Um, this is actually, um, I'm, I'm kind of involved in two ways in this. One, um, client services, uh, my job also oversees um, academic technology services. So I'm involved that way, but we're gonna be using this uh, for a history class. And my first job here at the college, which I still do is teaching American history. Uh, so this is a new book, a new, uh, you know, really history hasn't been using courseware too much lately. Uh, so it's, it's exciting that we'll be able to start off, hopefully, um, by, by starting off with a, a more robust system of, of integration, taking advantage of the deep links primarily, at least originally. Uh, but we're also looking at um, the ways that um, we transfer grades into the LMS. Um, and I don't know that we you know, be um, interested right away in taking advantage of the uh, pr uh, provisioning aspect of it. Uh, we, we recently um, installed um, ILP, which is a product from Lucian that integrates um, LMS data with, um, I'm sorry, SIS data with, with the LMS. Um, the Lucian colleague is mandated across all 58 community colleges in the North Carolina Community College system. Um, but as we, you know, move into our future LMS, it's nice to know that there is, you know, potentially another system we can take a look at, you know, and, and compare to, to this or, or our old systems. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, you know, we, we um, are really staying on top of, or trying to stay on top of the caliper situation. Um, we try to talk to both IMS Global staff and members, but also um, other uh, vendors, other schools. Um, and even though we're not really using it yet, um, we want to keep our pulse, you know, keep the pulse of how this is happening. Um, cause like most colleges, we're always thinking of ways that we can better use, uh, analytics. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, so that's all I have right now. And I'm also happy to take any questions. Thank you. So as mentioned, if you have questions, please feel free to put those into either the chat or the Q and A and we can respond. Um, at this time. There was a question earlier about the uh, product directory at IMS cert that or IMS cert.org that uh, Kelly had referenced. So the product directory, um, like other IMS resources are um, available to the public. So 
um, I pasted into the chat the link that you can access the directory um, at, and you can again verify which products or organizations have certified their implementations of the standards that are you that they're using and um, right from that directory and also the, you can access the resources uh, the higher ed playbook that Paul mentioned at imsglobal.org slash HED that will take you to a page where then you can link out to those different resources about getting started with standards and also there's a variety of procurement resources available to you. While we're waiting for some questions to come in, I just thought I'd mention um, both Gary and Paul had mentioned a little bit more about Caliper and one of the use cases I've seen in higher ed um, was a institution actually built their own internal dashboard for their advisement and are using Caliper data um, that's pulling information from their LMS and some of their other learning tools to see which students are not engaged or maybe they're engaged but they're not doing well academically so they were able to kind of create this um, stoplight dashboard um, to know which advi which students advisors should really be focusing on in addition to the other tools that they have but that was a really interesting use case that was just highlighted last week at one of our quarterly meetings are there any other questions coming in Kara none that I see so we can probably just wrap up a little early then. All right, um, our email addresses are on the slide. So if you have direct questions for any of us, we'd be happy to answer those as well. Um, in addition to any other questions you may have, we will follow up with in the next 24 hours, as Kara said, with copies of these slides, as well as some of the resources we mentioned. Uh, look for our second part of this webinar, which will focus on digital credentials to be scheduled for mid to late February. And we'll use similar communication channels. Um, if you're looking for that, we'll also reach out to all of you who've registered to let you know that that second one has been scheduled. In addition to that, there will be a presentation at the League's Innovations Conference in March. So look for our session there. Or if you're interested in attending any of the IMS global events, we have a Digital Credential Summit coming up in February at our Learning Impact Leadership Institute in May. So thank you for attending today, and I appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.